On August 6, 1945, at this very spot, up 600 meters, the first of two nuclear bombs were exploded. I don't like to do many videos about uh, horrific times, but because I'm an American and because I'm cycling through Japan and because I'm here in this city, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about what happened that day and show you what it's like right now. I found that the best way to appreciate a place that's based on a historical moment or even a, a structure that was built so long ago, like the Hemiji Castle that I looked at just a couple of days ago, is to put yourself in the position of a time traveler standing there on that day experiencing that place or that moment. The context allows you to appreciate it in a better way than simply looking at it in a book or just kind of looking at the place from a standpoint of I'm here and I'm looking at a place that experienced something so long ago. So as I walk through the city and you see advertisements on the walls and traffic in the streets, understand that this was the location of such a massive loss of life, a massive use of force that it altered this entire city on a very, very physical and real level. Bakers were baking, electricians were repairing lines, people were working in industry that wasn't necessarily related to the war. They knew about it, they supported their country, they had strong nationalism. This is not a video about justification or what was right and wrong. It's about this place in context of what happened. Now let's put our shoes on to the feet of somebody living in the city in 1945, August 6th. Let's say he's a baker, somebody not related to the industries of war. He's reading about it all the time. His nationalistic pride is happy probably that Japan is not backing down after Germany kind of threw in their chips and said, we're done. The war really didn't affect him so much, only as a footnote in the newspaper and the news on the TV and the propaganda spouted throughout all of the magistrate throughout the city. Support your country. Support the movement. Be a good Japanese citizen. Some of that included making bombs and setting traps around the city. But for a lot of people, I imagine, just like anywhere in the world, people went about their business, did their thing, and didn't pay it so much mind. Hiroshima, in particular, was spared from a lot of the bombings. A lot of the actions enacted against him by the Western world was avoided here in Hiroshima. And there was a lot of people saying that Hiroshima was sort of blessed and might survive the war intact. Now the castle you see behind me is the Hiroshima castle. And this was the epicenter, the command center for the division in charge of the army in all of southern Japan. Now unbeknownst to the baker, this castle was simultaneously keeping the Americans at bay and also setting up for the perfect opportunity for a bombing site. With all the military buildup in the castle, they knew that if they struck this place, it would be striking at the heart of the military industrial complex that was set up here in Japan. And in doing so, inflict the most damage and possibly end the war right there. Now, obviously, being less than a kilometer away from the epicenter, this is not the original castle. Apparently, when the bomb hit, the superstructure on top of the building was wiped totally clean and it kind of collapsed down uh, shortly thereafter.
Now this bridge just behind me is called the Ioe Bridge. This was the intended target of the nuclear bomb dropped from the Enola Gay that ended up detonating over Hiroshima. The actual detonation spot where I was standing before is just a few hundred meters away. There was some breeze that was blowing and it actually pushed the bomb slightly over to the east. I don't think it mattered that much on the whole grand scheme of things with the amount of damage that it wrought to the city. But it is an interesting place to be able to see this bridge and to realize that this bridge was the intended target for the nuclear bomb. Now behind me is one of the most iconic structures in Hiroshima in remembrance of the atomic bombing. It used to be a uh, arts and promotion center where people would organize parties and promote certain art activities within the city. So close to the epicenter, it was one of the structures that remained standing after the explosion. Partly because it's made with a lot of reinforced steel, it was designed by a Czech architectural firm. What do you think was going on there at around 8 10 in the morning on august 6th 1945 people were probably cleaning up getting ready to open maybe they were setting up for an event there now there was quite a debate in japan on whether they should maintain this structure here and use it as a remembrance of the events that took place that day i personally think that it's very important that you at least maintain a couple of structures to give you context of what happened that day. Because whether you think of it as a positive or a negative, you can come to Hiroshima without knowledge of the bombing and never really be confronted with it. You'll see people doing their business, beautiful buildings, a community that is content with its life. And unless you were to confront some of these specific places in this specific area, you might never know that a bombing happened here. And in some ways, that's an amazing thing that the human race can rebound from such a tragedy. Over 200,000 people lost their lives here that day and in the days immediately following. And the majority of those people were simply civilians going about their daily life. In many ways, it gives me hope. Hope that no matter what we're confronted with, the human race as a whole can get over almost any obstacle. It just takes time. Generations of time. Now, the two bombs that were dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima were called Fat Man and Little Boy. Here in Hiroshima, the explosion was caused by the bomb called Little Boy. Out of all of the fissionable material on the Little Boy bomb, only 1.7% contributed to the explosion. It was considered to be an extremely inefficient bomb. Kind of makes you think how much more devastating it would have been if it was only 50% efficient. Alright guys, well that's my episode for the history regarding the atomic bomb here in Hiroshima. I am about to set forth on a uh, pretty heavy stretch of countryside. I'll be taking a bunch of ferries and I will be uh, making my way down to Kagoshima. You'll be watching this video, I will probably be well on my way because I'm quite ahead and built myself quite a buffer zone of videos. So get ready for some travel-based videos, some more upbeat stuff, maybe some <laughs> trials and tribulations along the way, but it should be interesting. I, di I didn't necessarily want to focus so much on the 
uh, the museum and the, the things like this, these are things that you can go to. I really wanted to see the physical remnants of the bombing and the significance of the specific places here in Hiroshima. I hope that it's giving you a little perspective on even some things that are happening right now. But anyways, take it easy. I will see you tomorrow. Jayo. Thank you.